King Spenley. Welcome to the south coast of England and the country's biggest fortification, Dover Castle. They say an Englishman's home is his castle. Well, this week, this castle is mine. And like every other home in the land, it needs to be well defended because these days it's constantly under attack. The walls may keep out burglars, but today's digital invader is wily and can worm its way in through the smallest gaps. Last week's global cyber attack on companies in around 150 countries shows just how vulnerable systems can be, even if you're not fooled into clicking on dodgy links. So this week we're looking at cyber security. It's me versus the bad guys out there. And they may be small, but there's a lot of them. So what can I do to shore up my defenses? One way is through biometrics. Gadgets already recognise our fingerprints, and now banks are starting to identify us by recognising our voices. So, how secure is it? Is it possible, for example, to fake someone's voice? Well, we asked Dan Simmons to give it a go, or more precisely, to find the one person who might stand a chance of breaking into his bank account. Thanks, Ben. Well, one of the things you might not know about me is that I'm the only member of the Click team to have a twin brother. Hi, his name is Joe, and we kind of sound quite alike. We kind of do sound quite alike, but I came out first, and he just copied me. Yeah, well, for this report, it's going to be Joe who's going to try and copy me as we try to, to break, break into, into a, a bank. But first, we're going to need some help. Yeah, I really think that this guy is going to help us. Great, good, good. Right, nice to meet you here. If you'd like to sit down. What we're going to do first is I have this little analysis tool here. And what this is going to do is just detect, first of all, the, the pitch of your voice. The system that you're trying to break in is analysing your voice in lots and lots of different ways. So there's going to be about 100 different variables that it's picking up on. Uh, hello, I'd like to access my account, please, today. Hi, I wondered if I could access my account today. You see, there are pretty big differences between them. So who do you think's got the bigger Adam's apple out of both of you? I can't see mine. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wondered if I could make a withdrawal today, please. A what? A withdrawal. <laughs> I, I'd like to make a withdrawal. <laughs> That's like, give me the money. <laughs> spent two hours not to get your money. You're going to get excited. That's what's going to happen. Like, and that will do. raise my voice. And, yeah, you'll go, blah, 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 blah. It's simple. I've just got to go slower. All in five just seconds. Just got to go slower. It's the first time that I've tried using the telephone banking service and I'm, I'm not set up, so I'm hoping <laughs> you'll be able to... <laughs> how, many, how long do you want to make this? Let's bit shorter. One bit shorter. OK, a bit shorter. That wasn't exactly the way you said it the first time. I'd like to take everything out today, please. That was. I'd like to take everything out today, please. I'd like to take everything out today, please. That is, that is that not is, true. That is gross. That's not true. Cool. That feels like everything. Excellent. That's brilliant. Yeah. Thank you very much. No worries at all. What are you dressed like that for? Well, we're doing a job, aren't we? we I've got a gun. You don't need a gun, do you? Your voice is your weapon. Take that off. Erica is the voice of NICE. NICE is the voice security provider for Citibank credit card holders in the US, among others. Hi, that's me too. Joe's going to try to break into my account. What chances do you think he has? Very slim. What, uh, what advice can you give me to try and you know, break into his account? 
Well, you've yeah. known him his entire life, so try to imitate his voice. She seems very confident about this. What, 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 why is it that you think that maybe my twin brother can't break into my account? Voice biometrics is the most accurate form of identification that there is um, for access into financial institutions. Why? Why? It registers over a hundred different characteristics with the voice. Half of them are personality and half of them are physical. And you do look a little bit different Ooh. and your voices are different. So you will have different vocal characteristics. So therefore, how much of a percentage would you say I had a chance of? It would be one out of several hundred thousand. How do you make it so that I can access my account even if like at the moment I've got a bit of a <coughs> As I said, there's over 100 characteristics, and a cough or a cold only affects about two. So we still have all of those other characteristics to work with, and we can use those for identification. And has anybody fooled the system through the front door, basically pretending to be somebody they're not? No. Actually, can I just ask another question? It might just be a bit out of the ballpark, but is this legal? Because yeah. I, I don't, just don't want to look like a mug. Uh, with the niceties out of the way, yeah. I got to work giving the system a sample of my voice yeah, by I'm, speaking to it. I'm, I know that there may be people who might try to access my account, perhaps, so you need to be aware. Oh, you, OK, you are, yeah. While Joe kept himself busy. break into the account of Dan Simmons. Cho, you really don't need the gun. What do I have to do? Let's give this a shot. OK? Hi. Yes, I'd, I'd like to uh, access my current account, if I can, please. Yes. It's probably about £10, something like that. Yeah. Thanks very much. Yeah. That's great. Thank you. You failed. Oh! But close. Wow, look how, how close, close this is here. That? If we come over here, Whoa. you'll see there's the threshold Whoa. level, and that's... That is tight. That's pretty... Can we have another go? That wasn't a bad first go, was it? That, that was, was quite... Do you know what? That just came out of nowhere. Your first go was That just very came out good. absolutely nowhere. Very good. very good. But, you know, that's how you test the system. Yeah, well, that is actually how we test twins, this. Yeah. We do test they it do with test twins. Yeah. And siblings. And imitators. Well, you know, a fraudster wouldn't get three chances. <laughs> no. And the reason why a fraudster wouldn't get three chances is because it would register the multiple failures, and then it would dynamically increase so the threshold on the third and put a flag on the account. Right. right. That is not to say, of course, that it's impossible, is it? It's not impossible. It's not impossible. It's just very improbable. So, Dan, your bank account is still safe, yep. although your twin looked like he got away with some pretty cool stationery. Yeah, uh, yeah the old-fashioned way. <laughs> Were you surprised that a voice attack didn't work? Yeah, I was, actually, because we really tried hard to match up our voices, you know, with the vo voice coach and you know, all the rest of it. We really so just bubbled along underneath what we needed and couldn't quite get in. So what about the simpler stuff that we've been asked by banks to try in the last year, like my voice is my password? Did you try that? Oh, yeah. We had a crack at that. Now, to get into my account, my twin needs my sort code and my account number, things I've already helped him out with. He also needs to know my birth date, but that's probably something he already knows. The question is, can my voice print give me any extra protection? Secret bank, we're not giving any bank names away. Good afternoon. Welcome to HSBC. Oh, it's, Please enter your it's branch it's sorting it's code. Oh, I've got this one. Or okay. Do -do -do. And we'll go for... Now, interestingly, it's the PIN number and the Please account number, account which, number. if you're from this the days... Got this one. Thanks. If you're on the days from the old cheque book, then it used to... Both of those things used to be printed on cheques. So if you've got some, an old cheque from somebody, you already know that. Please enter your date of birth. He I've knows my one. date of birth. He, he knows my date of birth because we share the same date of birth. Good job it doesn't read that one out, isn't it? After the tone, please repeat the phrase. Oh, I'm listening to my voice oh, I've got this my one. Password. Okay. 
My voice is my password. I'm sorry, Bit Tony Blair. I didn't catch that. Bit Tony After Blair. the tone, Bit Tony Blair. please repeat the Just phrase, my voice is my password. My voice is my password. Welcome to HSBC Advance. The balance of your account <laughs> is one pound, 21 pence, credit. I'm off to the bank. For your available bank. I thought it was going to be more than that, Dan. <laughs> Evil Twin was in. Perhaps more surprising when you consider the service providers test their systems with twins to improve security. And get into other accounts apparently, Dan. So... HSBC told us... Voice ID is a very secure method of authenticating customers. Twins do have a similar voice print, but the introduction of this technology has seen a significant reduction in fraud. So, Joe actually did break into your real bank account? Yeah, my real bank account. So in this particular case, that wouldn't have been a great defence. And it need, you need to remember, I mean, he's my twin and not many people have one of those. Yeah, that's a good point. But computers can emulate and clone voices these days. We've started mm. to see be people being fooled in the same way that we've been fooled by Photoshop pictures yeah, for a I, few years now. I, I don't think that's going to work. Do you mind if we give that a go? Be my guest. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking Tower of London. Yeah, the crown jewels. First off, I need to record Dan's voice, so I caught him after work discussing his next big break-in. Next, I sent the recording to a voice-mimicking outfit from Canada called Liarbird. Here's their version of Donald Trump. I am not a robot. My intonation is always different. Not bad. I'm not a robot. In fact, I'd have to say, great the best. We are uh, working with uh, security researchers to figure out what is the best way to proceed with this and this is one of the reasons why we have not uh, published uh, this to the public yet. The developers hope the software could be used to give someone back their voice if they lose it through illness or an accident. But they are aware it could be used to fake a voice ID. It's a scary application, but uh, so one idea that, that, uh, that we're considering is to watermark the audio uh, like uh, samples that we produce. So we are able to detect uh, immediately if, uh, if it's us that generated us. Oh, so they're not quite ready to help you. Close, Ben, but no luck. Give it a few years, though. Yeah, well, the banks aren't actually going to. They've come up with something quite new, that even if you have somebody's details, you have their fingerprint, you could even perfectly replicate their voice print. You still wouldn't be able to get in. Right. I know, because I've tried to hack in. Major security no-no man works at an undisclosed financial institution. Oh. He manages innovation because they have an innovation unit. So what's he been innovating? Just watch the way he uses his phone, because his security system is doing just that. And even with all his login details, I'll need to replicate how he holds, taps, and tilts his device. Ha, hi, uh, Chris. Yeah. Um, do you mind lending me that for a moment? Sure. Okay. Okay. No luck. It's beaten me. That'll be yours then. Thank you very much. Cybersecurity headlines this week's tech news and more on WannaCry, the cyber attack on Windows. Things could get worse if hacking group The Shadow Brokers, who claim to have leaked the NSA spying tools used to create WannaCry, goes ahead with its promise to release fresh batches of tools each month. 
It threatens to sell new code that could compromise phone handsets and Windows 10, as well as data stolen from central banks. It was also the week that HTC revealed its squeezy selfie phone. And Google turned the heat up on its machine learning, revealing an app called Lens that turns your smartphone camera into a search engine. And SpaceX offered up its services to carry your loved one's cremated remains up into space. In partnership with startup Elysium Space, capsules of ashes will orbit Earth for two years before re-entering the atmosphere as a shooting star. A reservation aboard this out-of-this-world flight costs around £2,000. The startup's previous efforts, though, didn't reach orbit. And finally, in lighter news, over in Latvia, Ingus Augstkolns achieved the first ever human parachute jump from a drone. Rising to over a thousand feet with the help of 28 propellers and a communications tower, cheater, he landed safely with his parachute. I've retired to the inner sanctum. Dover Castle was continuously defended for 900 years, right up until the 1950s. It was a really successful defense. But I wonder whether our homes these days are more vulnerable, especially seeing as we're filling them with more and more connected devices, the Internet of Things. This is the family room at the heart of the castle where the Lord and his family could relax behind some pretty thick walls. The king could unwind with a game of chess. In the 13th century, they didn't have the Internet of Things, but they still have things. So, how do we make IoT, as it's known, more secure? Well, Ken Munro is my dinner guest. He's a security expert. Ken, roast peacocks on the way. But before that, we keep hearing about all of these connected devices continually being hacked. Why is it so hard for manufacturers to make them more secure? Well, it's not hard. It just needs some thought, some effort, a bit of time spent doing it right. The problem is that a manufacturer of an IoT thingy is trying to get their product to market, they're trying to get first mover, and someone somewhere along the line says security. Do they carry on shipping, or do they just ship it out and expose us as consumers? Well, that's, that's shocking. I'm going to hope, though, that security is getting better year on year in the Internet of Things. I don't think so. I think it's getting worse at the moment. Everyone else is piling into the market, the Me Too's. Everyone wants to jump on the bandwagon. They're doing cheaper products with less security, and consumers like us are buying it. Uh, don't worry about that. It's fine. Can you just give me a hand with this chest, please? Oh. Because in here, I've got some IoT devices. Well, here's one that. I really like the look of This is my Wi-Fi doorbell. Great idea. It sends an image of what's going on at your door to your phone so you can answer the door when you're at home. Fantastic idea. Except that you can unhook it from the door, press this button, and it'll give you your Wi-Fi key so you can hack the customer's network. I mean, OK, right. Beggar's belief. And then another one I love, talking about doors. You know, here we are in a castle. This is a smart door lock, so you can lock your door from your phone, but it also hooks up with voice control. So with Amazon's Echo, you can go, lock door, and it locks the door for you, brilliant. Doesn't do anything silly like unlock door, unless you hooked it up to Siri, and there was an error when it was first commissioned, you could actually shout through the window, unlock door, goes the burglar, and your front door pops open. I mean, I want a castle. Okay, what's next? Well, here's another crazy one. So this is a smart thermostat. I'm sure lots of uh, people have got these. So the idea being you can control your heating from your phone when you're on the train home, for example. Um, but we found that actually you could hack them and do crazy things like install ransomware on them so we could hold your heating system to ransom in the middle of winter if you wanted. So you turn people's heating off and then demand money yeah. you to turn it back on? Absolutely right. You can't have access. I mean, buy yourself a fire, like we've got. <laughs> 
It seems these gaps in our defences caused by our connected gadgets are proving to be a gift for our attackers. Now come on Ken, really? A smart kettle? What's the problem with a smart kettle? Well, I love this kettle. The idea being is that you can boil a cuppa from your bed when you wake up. Really clever idea. Um, unfortunately, this early version wasn't secure properly and you could sit outside someone's house, point an arrow at the kitchen and steal your Wi-Fi keys from your kettle. Could you also maliciously boil water in someone else's house? You could steam up their windows to your heart's content. Good Lord. Okay, I'm not safer anymore. Let's go to the throne room. OK, this is more secure. I've locked the doors. I've locked the doors. Oh, OK. Right, how can we defend ourselves and our data if we have a home full of connected devices? Well, most of the toys and things that I've shown you, they've been fixed already. So you have to go out and update your mobile app. Go to the Play Store, go to the App Store, check for an update. And then check that the software you've got on your toy is bang up to date, because the manufacturers may well have fixed the bugs. Would you buy a connected device for your children? I frankly, I wouldn't. I just don't think they're safe enough yet. <laughs> One extra word of advice. I know it's boring, I know it's old hat, but please, please make sure you've got a good, strong password on the app that you use to talk to your toys. OK, uh, looks like we have some unwelcome guests. Tell you what, I'm going to hand you over to Lara now. She's got some important security tips that maybe we should have paid more attention to. Ken, it's every geek for himself. recent ransomware attack showed that you don't have to be personally targeted to end up being a victim. This first tip would have protected you against that and many similar attempts to get inside the walls of your castle. One thing you definitely need to do is to update the operating system, the browser and the applications that you use. These pieces of software are very complicated. They contain bugs. Some of these bugs are security vulnerabilities. But of course, there are many other ways that we could be leaving ourselves vulnerable. Whatever people say, don't jailbreak devices. Use reputable download applications because without that, you're bypassing all the security that's gone into them. At some point, you're going to lose one of your devices. When you uh, set up the device in the first place, just ask it to encrypt all its storage. Even if you don't think you've got anything of value, your contacts are worth a lot of money to cyber criminals. If you're putting documents that you really don't want other people to see, then I advise not to put them in the cloud. If a website asks you to download something and you're not expecting it, don't do it. Protect your family and your friends, protect your school and the companies you work for, remove that risk. Brilliant security tips there. Unfortunately, I think they've arrived a little bit too late for me. Still, there you go. Thanks for watching, and I really, really hope that I will see you soon. <laughs> <laughs>